All right, guys, I'm excited because it's jet boat day. We've got our engine that's been sitting around for 10 years, a table full of parts over there, and we're not stopping until this thing either fires up or we find out that it's ruined for some reason. So those are the only two options we've got today. If it's your first time hanging out with us to catch you up, this is our jet boat series. We've got a 1977 Hawaiian jet boat. We affectionately call it the junkyard jet boat because it's been rotting away outside for over 10 years. In some previous videos, we got the engine test fit. We started rebuilding the jet pump and then we built a custom exhaust. And that brings us to today. On the table here, we should have everything we need to get the engine to run today, hopefully. Even though the engine was already mounted in the jet boat it only takes a couple minutes to pull it back out that way we can work on it here in the shop save us some time so we don't have to crawl in and out of the boat you know 100 times today this may be a long one we've got a lot of work to do we need to get a fuel system installed on this some basic wiring the computer throttle body we've got a pretty decent little list going over there on the whiteboard i really want to hear this engine run because it's special to me this was in the race car and carried me and jeff to 180 miles an hour for a few races until we pulled it out and i found some video from 2014 where we were draining the oil out of it and we taped it up i didn't have anywhere to store it back then so we wrapped it in trash bags at the lake and we stored it under a carport which is the worst place to store an engine outside and you can tell from looking at this thing that yes it definitely set outside. So I yanked this fuel rail out and you can see just how rusted the fuel injectors are. These look like complete garbage. Bolts are rusted on the intake, but you know, the engine turns over with my foot on the flywheel. So it's not seized up. It was taped up, so it didn't rain into it. All right, let's start with fuel system first. So actual pre-built marine fuel cells, they're way over $1,000. We're gonna go a little cheaper. Here's a plastic $150, 32 gallon fuel cell meant for a car. We're gonna have to modify it some. So it comes with this Gigantor fuel filler hole here. We're gonna cut this off. And this is where our in-tank fuel pump setup is gonna go. We've got a 70 gallon an hour Walbro fuel pump made in the USA. So that thing should last forever. But the one thing it doesn't have is a fuel neck for us to get our hose to the back of the boat for the fuel filler. And I couldn't find one of those pre-built anywhere that looked like it was worth a flip. So we're gonna build our own. Right, guys got the fuel filler neck made so took the time to draw up these two circle plates cut the holes out of them i use the stainless steel riv nuts on the back so you basically squash these in like a rivet these are quarter 20 and then you've got quarter 20 stainless bolts i've got nylon washers so those are fuel resistant we made a little cork gasket here and it seems to all fit together pretty good i'm not going to make the same mistake that we made on the budget boat where i did the rtv and it squeezed into the gas tank and got clogged in the fuel filter. I'm gonna use some old Permatex gasket sealant, just a little bit. I don't know if this is really necessary with a cork gasket, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, guys, we've got all the mods done to this tank that I think we need to get it in the boat. So we've got our fuel pump. The fuel pump sits in this uh, baffle to keep fuel from sloshing around. It's got a hole at the bottom to let fuel in and out. And then it's 5 16 fuel line up to the top. And then we're converting it to dash 6 AN line at the very top. It's got these nice leak proof bulkheads for the wires to go through. So that's pretty cool. The fuel level sender, it's normally one that you take and you mount separately somewhere on the tank, but I just disassembled it, drilled a hole through this plate and mounted it to this. So this is kind of all one unit now. I'm pretty happy with the way the tank came out. Here's roughly where it will sit relative to the engine and the boat. So now we'll get those fuel lines kind of routed to where we want them. For this, we're gonna run dash six stainless braided line for everything just to keep it simple. I've got an adjustable fuel pressure regulator and then a liquid fueled gauge will stick in that. Metric, of course, of course, metrical. Probably five millimeter. Oh, 
always learn to throw a little sharpie mark on the braided line here. That way when you're tightening these down, you can make sure the hose isn't pulling out, so. First end made. So that'll come from the fuel pump sawhorse. Beautiful. I got a 10 micron fuel filter. Most of the time you wanna do a 10 micron on a fuel injected engine, unless something's changed. Shot my guy there, should be fine. Nice. Almost done. Last couple fittings here. And lines are a pain, but they're nice when they're done. Okay, last fittings here. I've got a Y so that we go to each fuel rail. All right, the fuel system is done. All right, let's cross it off the list. Let's work on alternator coil pack and start to get into the wiring here. Check it out, it's been raining so much, we've got a, a foot-long turtle coming through here. Usually, we don't get these around here, but it's been raining so much. What's up, dude? I don't know where he's headed. He's just kinda chilling right now. Okay, so our one accessory that needs a belt is the alternator. This is an alternator from a 98 to 2002 Camaro, it's brand new. I saw a Finnegan's Garage episode of his jet boat and he was shredding the belt on his alternator. Same kind of setup, so I try to align these as best I can so we don't go shredding belts out on the lake, but you know, we'll see. Our six rib uh, alternator belt. <laughs> We're down to like <laughs> three and a half ribs on that piece. She's good. She'll make it the whole season, I think. So this is the hinge point for the alternator. And so to tighten the belt, basically would move like this. And so I needed a big bracket for the top. So I got on the old CNC router. I did this one manually. I didn't draw it up. I just drove the uh, bit around with the controller. That's why it kind of looks a little haggard down here. But this is three quarter inch aluminum. So. This thing is not going anywhere. And I had to carve the old junkyard jet boat logo into it. So we get our six rib belt on. Let's see. And of course I carved this upside down, the logo. That's all right. Okay, so then we can set the tension. So it is on there and I've got the belt tightened up good enough, I think, to run it. What do y'all think? Okay, I'm happy with the alternator coils. So here's the problem with the coils for the LS engine. We try to put it into a boat. When this engine is in a car, the coil packs here, they mount to the top of the valve covers right here. And then the plug wires are pretty short. They go right to the plugs and the exhaust, you know, it's open. So the plug wires can go in between each primary. Well, on the boat, you know, this is one solid manifold. So what I decided to do is mount them under the engine. So I got some aluminum and made a bracket to mount the coils to. Only problem is, normally the coils are like this and we've got to flip them over so the plug wires go up like that. So I've got to reverse the wiring on these. So I've got this all mapped out here on the whiteboard, I think, you know, each coil has one trigger wire to make it fire. So when it's in the car, it's purple, blue, green, red, and we need that to become red, green, blue, purple. I've got the old connector here, how the pins map out and the new one. So as long as I get the wiring right, I think it'll fire in the correct order. I hope they do make special tools for this. All the pros that actually work on cars all day long would have them but we don't. Purple, there we go. All right, I've got the wires reorganized, got the little tabs rebent on here so that they'll go back into this connector. Do red here, get 
that guy in. Okay, it clipped. So holy crap, I did the top wrong. Even after drawing that on the whiteboard, mapping it out, it should be green red. What an idiot. What do y'all think of this last minute coil bracket? So it's just some aluminum angle and some aluminum round tubing, a couple rivets, and that's it. This might be a good tip for people just getting started with this kind of a hack job building. Get yourself to Home Depot or the metal store and get four things, some angle, some square tubing, some round tubing, and then miscellaneous uh, flat strap. And get that in aluminum and steel, and you can hack together just about any bracket or contraption, just with some rivets and bolts. You don't have to weld half the time. You guys see any red flags with this? I'll put uh, like a gallon of dielectric grease and all these connections to keep the water out, because this is like the worst place in the boat to have, uh, you know, wiring is in the bilge area, but you know, starter's gonna be down here. That's just how it goes, so I think it'll be okay. Coil pack mounts, check it off the list. All right, now let's get the wiring harness and computer sorted out for this. So for the wiring, I bought a $100 Amazon special wiring harness for the LS engine, pretty cheap. Uh, the reviews were so-so. You know, if you got one of these built on a Friday by someone, we might be in for some fun troubleshooting. These wiring harnesses may look a little daunting at first, but it's not too bad once you get into it. There's about 25 connectors here. It's been a while since I've wired one of these up, so it's gonna take me a minute to hack through it, but uh, we'll get it together. No good my kiss. No one fall me to lean on Into the blue sky Takes me far away Into the sunset I spent the past hour ripping out all the wiring we don't need from this harness. So we got it down to about 55 wires that'll come from the computer and 18 connectors to the engine. So that's pretty good. All right, for the ECU, the computer we're gonna use, this is actually out of the old race car. So here's the story with this one. A few years ago, Jeff and I were in the Camaro race car that you might've seen in some other videos on the channel. We were doing 150 miles an hour and a couple of the rods in the engine decided they wanted to take a page out of the North Korean space program and blow up. This was a piece of the firewall. And on this side was the engine bay. And you can see all the burnt oil still on here. Still smells like fire. This side was the interior of the car where this computer was mounted. And this is Jeff's race shoe. So his race shoe melted to this piece of metal uh, when he was trying to get out of the car. So we kept this as a little memento. But, you know, besides the wiring melting here, this computer looks like it's okay. I've got the uh, tuner box here, HP tuners. That's a little melted from the fire because it was in the car with this computer. And I really want it to work because you know, got nostalgia for this old computer here. It's been around a while. This should be interesting because I have never seen the inside of one of these ECUs. And since this one was in a fire, I'm curious what it looks like in here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, weather sealed. A little gasket there. This thing is fine. Wow. These are like different MOSFETs probably to fire the injectors, coils, things like that. Cool, ooh, Intel. Intel inside. It's interesting looking at some of these resistors here that are kind of all crooked from the soldering process. But now before we go any further, I'm gonna hook a battery up to this wiring harness. We'll get the computer plugged in. We really gotta see if this thing works. Cause if it doesn't, you know, we're kind of stuck. All right, step two. Let's hook it up to the battery here and uh, hopefully we don't see smoke. Okay, no smoke. That's a good sign. This should click a relay for ignition on. Okay, and it does. I got the laptop out with the old HP tuners program. So we're gonna plug it into the OBD2 connector here. Got a power light on the tuner. Let's see if we can connect to the computer. Scan, interface not found. That's not good. It's possible this vehicle isn't supported. What? The only thing I can think of, there's a ground down here, which goes to the engine but this could, oh yeah. We're getting some clicking now. Okay, we're getting further now. All I did was clamp this uh, ground down a little better here. Oh, did it connect? We are connected. Start scanning. 
Oh. Man, that's exciting, because that computer was in that car in the fire in 2017, so for uh, seven years, it's been sitting on the shelf over there. We've got the dash out of the old race car from when this engine last ran. Last thing I wanted to do is put fresh oil in it, change the oil filter. We drained the oil out of this engine before we had it in storage. I just took the oil filter off. Gray sludge, that's a new one. What, what is that all about? Uh, this is a little more concerning though. Went to just unscrew this and um, there's water coming out. Now I don't know if that's from, what the, f why is there so much water? Ah oh, shit. I don't know if that's from it sitting in the jet boat Oh, uh, in the rain? The past few weeks, it had a cover over it. One moment, I gotta clean this up. Shiny, 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 shiny. Ah. One moment, please. Only way I can think of that water could have gotten to this engine the past few weeks is if, um, when we did the test of these exhaust manifolds and I ran water through it, if one of these manifolds is cracked inside, it would have been just leaking water in through a cylinder and fill the oil pan with water. So, you know, these, are, these were used manifolds that JT got that could be bad and cracked inside. And that would really suck. <laughs> we're gonna ignore that all for now and pretend it happened in the past when it was in storage. Got new oil in it. So now, final question, does she run? All right, let's kick the water on. Let's kick everything on. Fuel pump, it's going. Gauges on. Everything is reading on the computer correctly. Fire, fire in the hole. Oh, oh, I double tapped the starter. Don't do that. Oh, it's coughing a little bit. It's coughing. Hey, the oil pressure's building up. Oil pressure is up to 30. That's a good sign. It's huffing and a puffing. But nothing yet. Why? Why? Why in the start there? At least seems like it's popping out this side. Now, why would that be? Okay, it started to go. It's only running off one side, I think. We got a four cylinder LS1, most likely coil. Next test, let's do spark test. We're gonna hook up the spark plug. I'm gonna ground it really easily with a jumper cable so we can look at it. Oh well, yeah, it's sparking, isn't it? Yeah, it's sparking. I think it's fuel injectors. One, um, one way we could check real quick, spray carb cleaner, starting fluid into the intake. If the injectors aren't working, but spark is, it'll crack off for just a second. So here we go. Oh, carbon choke cleaner. All right, this will tell us if something's up with our fuel injectors or the computer. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yep, the air fuel gauge started to work because it's on this side. So 
Something's up with the injectors. Keep on hammering on the injectors. It's starting to work. It's starting to work. It's starting to work. <laughs> I started hammering on these injectors on the left bank and it's starting to kind of crack off on that side. So maybe all four of those are just stuck. We've got like five out of eight cylinders so far, so that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, it wants to run. Oh, she wants to run. I need some damn earmuffs. I forgot how loud this son of a bitch is. She sound good, boys. degrees out here I've been waiting 10 years to hear that thing run again it's a little stumbly we got to do some tuning on it it's idling on its own at least so anyway we'll keep you guys updated as we get it in the jet boat appreciate you guys watching as always we'll see y'all next time